more information you have, the better the decisions. Data is crucial to do important decisions in Dota games and even before the Dota game in preparation. It's really cool that a big company like SAP is investing into esports and that I can be a part of it is amazing. Not many moments of today have gone the way that anybody has expected to be completely honest and this game definitely did follow suit. Let's actually break down how we even made it to the incredible comeback that Liquid was able to make. Nahaz, you keep saying that you think builds were a big factor into this entire scenario. I think the itemization by Vici was highly questionable when you look at drums, blink as the first two items on your OD, and you look at uh, blink and force early on your Tide Hunter. That's just not how those heroes are being built in this current meta. The focus, Tide did have a Vlad's, but the focus has been so much on utility and damage. And Where's the damage on the side of Vici? When, fine, Weaver is building Maelstrom, Dragonlance, eventually got an MKB at the end of the game, but the mid-game damage with the lead that Vici had after the laning stage should have been a lot bigger. Oh yeah, if, if, if you were talking about uh, item choices, uh, Tidehunter with Heaven's Halberd against Monkey King and PA, that would be the item. Like, this item gives evasion, cripples, the Any, melee heroes, right? yeah, I mean, both, I mean, both of the I, cores the, inside of... Fine. Uh, Halberd, Liquid. you want to talk about Halberd, you want to talk about Deso like Ghost Stick did when you have a Weaver to amp up. Weaver never bought Deso in this game. Okay, so a lot of different options, but why do you think they actually went with the items that they did have? Because I, I remember one of the first things that we saw when we actually did like a VG, we liked the draft. We, we liked how they did draft quite a bit. So was there a pressure put on them that made them build in a certain way, made them go for these items? I think... Ori was worried about people getting on top of him as the OD. He wanted the mobility in the fights. They, they were getting a lot of value. I think Lacoste pointed this out as we were watching the game. They were getting a lot of value out of that save. He did get a couple pretty good astrals off that blink. You don't need a blink dagger on, on Tidehunter, on OD, and on Tusk as well. Yeah. It's just way too many. Th this, is a, this is a fight that, what? okay, that's a... No, I mean, this is fight. early on, and yeah. I mean, you're already seeing, like, the, the CS gap between the OD and the Monkey King really got out of hand from here. Yeah, I think OD should even stomp uh, his lane earlier. I, mean, I agree. Once he hits level 4 and start hitting him with the orb on level 5, Monkey King can't really lane against OD anymore. And, I mean, you're looking at Mind Control on his Dark Seer. Mind Control at 20 minutes in this game had 5,400 net worth on his Dark Seer. Just for reference, that's 300 less than Faith Beyond had at 10 minutes yesterday. He had first item Glimmer on this Dark Seer. Yeah, he I got so behind. I got to give him credit for that uh, Glimmer cape. It's the same concept when you're playing a core mm -hmm. Pagna. You get it as your second item so you can survive, especially against the OD. He can't hit you. He can't steal the int. You get... You're getting rid of the bugs from Weaver, so she loses the vision as well. No, absolutely. I mean, it's 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 kind of a safety build, right, yeah. in this game, that he needed that item to have any chance and, of surviving and these fights. He just needed to buy time. If you uh, watch the, the game, he's playing the bottom part of the map uh, while yep. PA is farming, while being empowered and having the iron shell. I mean, we got to give credit to but Shadow. He, I mean, I mean, he used the, like, five out of ten crits in the last fight, plus some lucky bashes as well. But as you, as you, just so many of these fights, it's striking me again watching the replay that, that you know, there's so many of these fights that were favorable to Vici. If you have one more damage item, if you have one more utility item, it's all of a sudden three kills instead of two. It's not giving up the extra kill. I feel like uh, Vici Gaming needed to man up. Uh, they were playing uh, a bit like a pussies, I have to say. <laughs> I mean, they, they really are. They had so much advantage at one point, uh, took all tier two towers. They they just needed to, to man up, get or try to force a five fight. So they I played kind of scared. They went oh for yeah. safety builds. How easy is it to, like you said, man up mid-series? Is it easy as easy as saying, all right, we didn't go for damage items. We lost fights because yeah. of it. Let's change it this time around, I even mean, before he gets drafted. It's hard to change it since you're playing against the PA, who's empowered. She's going to have a right. lot of farm, can easily come back, uh, even though there was no need for well, a, I don't a real comeback. She, she was really that's playing what, good that's in what the laning stage as well. They, turns they it from the lane. A, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No, 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 I'm done. I'm done with you.
<laughs> I'm not Kyle, it's okay. <laughs> I don't even mean mid-game, though, mid-series. Is, is this something that's going to be easy to assess for yeah. VG? Mm -hmm. They just go, okay, this is where we screwed up. Let's yeah, fix it. A, this is a veteran team. Uh, they, the veteran team, they're well coached. You know, I, I think, I have to think that the mistakes from this game are going to be very easily fixable. I'm, I'm shocked that they happened in the first place. I mean, one Lacoste is, is saying that, you know, they're not manning up in these fights. I mean, not playing with a sense of urgency against an empowered PA and then yeah. Monkey Look King. Look at Weaver joined the fight right now. She actually dealt zero damage right. in that fight. She, she was afraid to enter the Monkey King's ulti. She needs to be in the back line killing uh, the support heroes or just trying to disrupt the Magnus' blink. That, that's her job. I give you bonus points for referring to Weaver as she. Oh, yeah. I mean, in it my actually book, triggers it's always me when a people she. Saw spe when people call Spectre he, but anyway. A beaver is actually a he, even though we should not assume genders in 2019. But uh, if she gives birth to spiders, it's a she. But didn't she, didn't didn't Weaver used to be? Uh, I mean, she knows. probably used to be a she. Nah, 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 don't go there. That's where we start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a deep Ass, hole for not be working with them again. Yeah, got it, yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. We're going to move away from that topic, and we're going to move on to the next one. We've been talking about VG quite a bit. We're talking about some of the mistakes that they made. Was there anything on the side of, of Liquid that also enabled them to win? Did they, they make any really good moves? Are they gelling better with Shadow? Or do you think this really just all comes down to VG? Well, I think it was something that you asked, and we talked about at the very beginning of the draft, is you know how can they make things even a little bit easier on Shadow? And the answer is clearly in power, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there was just no way as as a PA in this game that you're not going to get at least an acceptable level of farm with a Magnus on your side. Yeah, man, we're just seeing this hero so much. I mean, it's the, the, this this is like the, the, the most cancerous uh, uh, <laughs> duo in public and in, in, yeah, in professional Dota. It's so easy to come back. I already mentioned, like, tier two teams can easily win with this kind of a combo uh, against tier one teams. Uh, but I, I got to give credit to Matomba, man. Man, he, he was playing well. Yeah. And we've seen that with him on this hero as well. I, I think Shadow we've referred to as potentially being that pressure point. This particular combo definitely does play dividends. Can you target that at all in the draft if you are Vici? Can, can you say, okay, we want to make Shadow's life difficult? You can. Uh, I, I think, again... I don't think that the adjustment from Vici should be the draft. I think I will stand by that they won that draft, really. Mm -hmm. oh, I mean, yeah. fine, yep. you can flame me all you want, but I will stand by that they play that game five times and, and Vici wins four out of five. But I think they wish that they had some of the strategic decisions and the item decisions back. Yeah, that's crucial to note, right? Hey, you're fine with how they drafted last time. We all kind of agreed on the desk that was strong. Besides me, I didn't have any. I'm just saying you guys are definitely strong as far as the draft was concerned. You're just concerned about itemization. Now, on the side of Liquid, what do you want to see this squad do if you want to see them try to 2-0 here? I mean, I think they should just play around uh, Shadow again. Give him a, a good yeah. matchup, either one versus one, or give him uh, like a secured lane like they just did. Uh, they they were tri-laning with the PA just to stop Tidehunter from even getting close. Free farm early on, then give her a steroids after in terms of empower. So you're good with what Liquid's doing. You're oh, yeah. I mean, and Liquid's I don't know. is a team that always does well in uh, Roche pit fights. Uh, this That's is where, where they turn the game, the second Roche, Gs and Ages. I think that I, I think it's tough. Um, one of the hallmarks of Liquid is that they are able to win sacking any one of their players, any one of their core players, right? All of their three core players uh, play pretty well, even Miracle plays decently well from behind when they have the right game plan. Mind control was way behind in this game. But that's not that's not the liquid playbook though. Him being that far behind, that well into the game. He's Yeah, he's usually not that guy who's playing from behind. Right. And in this game he also showed that he can do some amazing stuff. His item build as well. He got the hex. OD did not have a BKB. Easy, easy kill once you get on top of him. And I do want to remind all of you guys that our analysis is powered by SAP. And now we're going to have another thing to analyze, and that is the draft. We've already moved in, and both of our teams are getting started, headed into game number two, Vici against Liquid. And keep in mind, folks, whoever does win this one is going to be taking that number one spot oh, in nice. Group C.
and uh, seeing the, we can see some of the uh, bands already on board here. Some of those unconventional Vici opens are going to be on the table. I, I, I'm interested to see whether they'll switch things up or go pretty standard as they did in game one. Yeah, and Vici going standard was able to win the draft. Do you think that with these openings, they'll be able to have a very favorable draft again? I think it's, I, I don't know. I think um, I'm seeing fewer drafts decided in the opens so okay. far in this patch. And maybe that's just because uh, teams have yet to figure a lot of things out. But TI, this last TI was the most lopsided drafting TI I yeah. think that we've ever seen. There were more games that were like 70, 30, 80, 20 out drafts. This patch, I think it's gone back a little bit the other way, but a lot of these drafts you're seeing like third pick and fourth pick. Okay, really cool. Turn. And you said one of the reasons is just because of all the new information coming yeah. in for these players. You think maybe it gets decided a little bit later but on. Yeah, hard to argue. This, by the way, Fade Tusk was like part of Tusk coming back into the metal last year. He was Earth the spirit, come on. I mean, it's a there no, you go. It's a no brainer. Spirit. Yeah, absolutely. This, this two heroes are the best position for heroes. Uh, in the game right now. Both I strength agree. heroes can build into whatever item is needed. Crimson Guard, uh, Urns, Vlads, whatever. Team fight items, just get yeah. a Bracer. That's your team fight I item. Mean, ta <laughs> tanky, tanky supports that can just run around, roam yeah. around the map and do stuff. And they don't need a lot of gold to do and it. This is a good uh, good TB yes. game. They already banned out uh, Elder Titan, so mm -hmm. one of the better counters Five against the TB. Remaining. Just remove all of his armor later on. Vici going to be selecting their next hero here. They're going to go into that extra time. What are they looking for? Lich is still in the pool if they want to go for it. Uh, it's a good hero against the TB, the magical damage that they need. And this opener doesn't reveal anything, uh, as you mentioned in the previous previous game. Lich Tusk, I'm always glad, glad to see it. Uh, there's a reason why these heroes have a, such a high win rate. Yeah, I think you can get yourself in a lot of trouble revealing both your supports first phase in the last couple of patches, but when it's list touch, uh, <laughs> Lich Tusk. Let's <laughs> <laughs> <Lich> touch, <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> you really jumped on that opportunity. And there we go. Yeah. It is gonna be it is gonna be let's touch. <laughs> there you go. Knew you had my back on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting Oracle band. That's that's a hero that I want to see more of. I, I can see the relation. Le uh, let's touch sinister. Can sinister we not? Sinister <laughs> 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 Hey, how about you know TIL, right? Uh, that uh, how uh, I did not think of before that game how hard uh, Lich was going to counter Bristleback. It's a mini duel, right? Oh yeah, he just turns him around. Even though it does, uh, he doesn't reduce the damage from Quill Spray because it's magic physical <laughs> damage. We're talking about Frost Shield. Yeah, they, 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 yeah, there's so many weird interactions now because Frost Shield only reduces attack damage, yeah. not generic physical spell damage. Uh, no, no detailed mechanical discussion at this point. Uh, okay, so it, Liquid, it's, it's interesting that Liquid in both of these games has targeted the Ori Kunkka coming into the second phase for the ban. I think that's very smart. Uh, a lot of Ori is very, very confident in that hero, and it just it sort of secures your team fight. Okay, so team fight secured early on yeah and that's something uh, vici is uh, again all the chinese teams they like to with usually with their first core pick secure some kind of team fight they uh, could uh, try to grab a faceless void i've seen e home doing it a lot uh, especially w when it's paired up against the ledge like you want to have something that uh, can finish off uh, tb before he uses the sunder and i'm i'm Kind of surprised that we don't see too much of a Phantom Lancer. That the hero kind of disappeared. Yeah. They, we've we've seen almost none of it, and there have been a couple of these drafts that I think really have called for it. Like we've seen some first phase undying. I mean, no maybe it's gentleman's agreement. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, TB so against was, the, so we PL, don't crash the game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Oh, that's an that's an interesting ban. Huh. Lone Druid. This hero got uh, yeah. got nerfed. Well, I, 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 like I still think it's playable in the. In certain uh, matchups and uh, scenarios, depends on what heroes you have on your team, and th this is the kind of a hero that could uh, maybe fit uh, Shadow's profile that I was talking about. Just give him one versus one matchup. Longdrew does not lose a matchup. 
I liked your void point, by the way, because the other thing about Ehome and uh, that Ehome and Vici have in common is that they have some crossover between here in hero pools between their their one and their three position, and that's what makes the void really dangerous for them. This Grimstroke again. Again, with that third pick Grimstroke, and it, it, it's just something that they never really took advantage of in, in the last draft. Uh, felt, did not feel its presence too much until the last couple of engagements. I, I feel like every time Grimstroke pops up, the debate is just ready to go back on about this hero every time it gets locked in, and now we're seeing it once again be that third pick. What is your first thought uh, whenever you see a Grimstroke? If it's not Bob Ross... You're you're getting fired from this Dota panel. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that's gonna <laughs> be the <laughs> thing that gets yeah, you fired. Really uh, yeah, uh, hey, yeah, it's Bob, Bob Ross. People that hired me. That's what I saw. And I do it. <laughs> <laughs> I said they secure the job. Sure. <laughs> All right, let's look Man. at what Vici's trying to do they're, here. They're burning through reserve yeah, time. Yeah, they're, they're running out of reserve time very quickly. Yeah, they're Team really thinking about this first four pick. Okay, again, first same first three. Yeah. What does that say to you, seeing the f same first three again? It says to me that they understand that their draft was not the problem. In the they they yeah. can go for Tidehunter in one versus one matchup uh, and uh, put a tri lane. Tusk Ledge plus one is always good, just to pressure the TB out of the lane. But uh, also Tidehunter is a good laner against the TB. Whenever meta is down, th this is pretty, pretty tough kill to get. And now with Vici already, I, I feel like looking at items here is going to be really important to see what they change up in strategy. But we got a few more heroes right, to look at. So th this is this is the counter yeah. that I liked. You uh, mentioned that in the last game, in the last yeah. draft. Just Enigma, he can't escape the black hole. There's nothing that uh, stops the black hole. Uh, even pre BKB right now. I mean, they, yeah, they I can't mean, pop it, especially when he gets a BKB. So they might uh, you try can, to think of something. You can you can wall or yeah, but it's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's we don't not, count, not count that as a remaining. counter. I mean, if you get uh, Etherlands, mm -hmm. that works. Hmm. But this is this is next level. We're, we're not going to talk about that. Bring it to the next level. So. Probably pick your safe laner here. Okay. Okay, so this should, I mean, should probably be a, a tri lane with uh, Luna, Lich, yeah. Grimstroke. It's it's a really defensive lane as well. A lot of uh, save it capabilities, is. a lot of uh, physical damage reduction, especially against the TB. That's always always and good to at have. At least at least given the couple of I haven't gotten to watch as much tape on Vici as I have on Ehome. Of course, because we had the minor, uh, they Vici has not looked nearly as crisp rotating in and out of those tri lines early as the Ehome has. Uh, so I'm not. The Luna is great. I mean, it, you 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 always have that option to just steamroll on the other side of the map. You put those points in aura early, and it makes these strength heroes like Tide and like Tusk that feel so much more tanky. Okay, so so you're liking the pick then? I think it's okay. Um, and it's a, it, you need to pick a safe laner that she does have the option to stop the black hole with uh, Lucent Beam, right? Because it, it, it will stun. Yeah, but they need something after BKB. I agree, and I it's agree. Usually the other way around, you pick TB into Luna because of the reflection. You get uh, right. all the stuff from Luna. What's the pick for Ori here? Man, I, you, I, you can't pick Void anymore unless you're gonna mid-tide, which is crazy here. Yeah. I mean, do you just do you just have to do something like Razor and play for the lane? I think Razor is more of a 10th pick when you see that yeah. there's a bad matchup. They could go for, for maybe a Dragonite. Uh, they need something. Could go back to OD. Or OD. Uh, I think OD and uh, Luna is a bit greedy and it could yeah. uh, go slow, especially yeah. since you have a Tide Hunter. You're out of time, though. At DK or OD, I think. All right. Uh, I, this All is right. an Ori special from quite a while back. Uh, it's a hero that a lot of teams gave a look to in this patch with the rework to Coil, the leash status now. Um, it hasn't. A lot of teams gave it a look and promptly went away. You like this hero right now? 
Yeah, I think the, the hero is underpicked. It has okay. so much potential. Team fight, uh, especially in the late game with the Aghanim Scepter. How do you rate it in lane? Do you think it's strong, the think it's strong enough in mid? I, I, I think it's fine. I don't okay. think he's going to lose a lot of matchups, and uh, so far it, they don't have any any good stun. This could be a good uh, Dragonite game for Team Liquid yeah. as well. It's not not an instant stun, has a cast animation, but uh, you can still surprise Puck once you get a Blink Dagger or just get a Shadow Blade. Uh, more tower damage as well. I think they just need, uh, need a little bit more control and uh, something uh, that pairs up with the Grimstroke ulti, so any kind of a single target spell. Uh, as you mentioned, a lot of teams going away from this hero after they gave it a stab. What do you think the reason was that they moved away from Puck? I think the, I think the mid hero pool is just in a weird place to begin with right now. Um, it didn't didn't look like it had the kind of basically they found other heroes that they thought were better. It's a lame yep. answer, but there's so much yet to be discovered with this patch that Just didn't seem to uh, be you know, good enough. They, I, I saw some teams play it. It looked okay. It didn't. It didn't look like uh, there were some lane matchups that it got punished in, and yeah, yeah. And, and now we're. I don't. See I it. don't have a great <laughs> answer yeah, yeah. for no, you. No, but that's the thing. It, but no, but I think it's an important thing to bring up. Now when we are seeing it, now we can keep our eye on that hero as the last pick does come in on the side of Liquid. I, I was actually thinking about Venomancer, but. Uh, it's so hard to actually predict what Team Liquid is going to pick. They have this like unique uh, unique style, and uh, you never know what they're going to surprise you with. Uh, so this is the hero that uh, Why, is not going to die. I, I think they just need someone to, to pressure, pressure sure. the towers. It's not a control against the puck. I feel like they feel Enigma, Grimstroke, and uh, GH on this Earth Spirit is going to be enough to control the puck. I mean, it's, it, again... It's a comfort pick for Liquid, and I think that's important when you talk about playing playing around a stand-in. You give Matumma in a hero that he has both a lot of comfort on and ability to steamroll one ahead and play from parry or a little bit behind. Um, I think it's a hero, though, that Ori's going to do fine against. So I I was expecting them to go after the puck a little more. Okay. Venomancer is the hero, the boat. The boss hero of uh, these utility items, uh, the hero Fair can enough. build anything. So whatever you need, he can build Crimson Guard, Pipe, Mech, uh, Urn, whatever, Aghanim Scepter, Force Staffs, any any kind of uh, team fighting item, he can get it. Yeah, we're going to have to see which route pipe. they do take. We're ready to yeah, jump pipe. in right now to the game. We're going to have to see if Liquid's going to be able to take it in a 2-0 or if we're going to bring this all the way to a game three. Thanks so much, Rich. Game three, is it in the cards? Fogged. We're hopping into this Liquid versus Vici. What do you think? Is is the Veno what Liquid needed? Hmm. I mean, it's it's pretty nice because they've got this this TB and this Enigma, which are these like super powerhouse heroes, and it's it's Liquid, right? I was looking at you like right before they even picked the hero, and I was thinking it's gonna be some like Bristle or Venomancer. It ends up being this one. They just love playing this this like disruptive hero on Matu. If he's not playing like the Monkey King, which he played phenomenally in the last time, it's just this disruptive hero. And for this one, it's just like this uh, this tower protector and this pressure in lanes where he doesn't really have to be there too much with these Venom Wards. He's going to be so annoying. And this hero always causes a bunch of problems. We got to we gotta get Nahaz on the stats of how many times he's played Venomancer. Because holy crap, this guy plays this hero all the time. I remember like yep. seeing him on streams and stuff, playing Veno constantly. He plays it in pubs. He it all the time. Pubs. He Who plays Veno in pubs? He loves playing. He, he plays it in, I'll, I'll, I'll spoil this one too. He plays it in party queue. Oh god. He picks it in party queue and I party queue with him. That's just, it's like Jack. Yeah. <laughs> Except Jack goes to the jungle and yeah. makes everybody cry. He does. So let's see. We have the Ori Puck. So it's a... Pretty confident Vici going for like this four protect one strategy versus an Enigma, which can be a little bit devastating because you know your Enigma just can focus fire onto the Luna and the Tide Hunter. If he's able to ever get those two together, it's gonna be really hard for them to really disrupt if he actually does go for like that BKB and Tide Hunter. You know sometimes we see that you know Tide Hunter is like the combo breaker because you can you know crack and shell off of the RP. You can't crack in a channeled black hole on yourself. Nope. No, it's a it's a bad time. It's one of the the biggest 
sort of counters that you end up seeing to Tidehunter, yeah. uh, like Disruptor being one of those other ones, or Avoid or something like that. So I, I definitely like it a lot. And, and I think that while Puck does have some of those problems of like sort of static damage, mm -hmm. the best time that you can have him is if you coil a couple people and say, all right, Luna's just going to beat you while you're stuck here. Yeah, that's, that's the one thing. I think that's why they actually picked this Puck. It's that they have really good things that synergize with the coil. They have a Chain Frost, and they have an Eclipse. You right. get coiled, you're going to get hit by that Chain Frost, and you're going to get hit by that Eclipse inside of it. Or you're going to have to break your coil, and then you're stunned forever. I'm really curious about this mid matchup because I think Matu's really going to struggle. This is Ori's, in my opinion, his either his like first best or his second best hero overall, and it's a clear base damage advantage. <sighs> oh, Fade! One last punch. The Kuro Painty Man gives him the kill. And with that, it's going to be first blood going towards Team Liquid. The other thing to maybe watch for, we did see the Ags uh, Tusk earlier. Maybe you get the Coil and give him a little kick as we see another punch Yang's here on the Yang. And uh, another kill. That first meta usage, very successful for Liquid to guarantee their lane. They even have capped the lane equilibrium down bottom. Oh my god. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah, normally you see that just get all messed up if you're going yeah. for those kills. If you're going for those, especially if you're going for like the two of them, like you're like, oh man, you know, lane gets lane gets pushed out, but no, they kept it in the right place. Well, speaking of being in the right place, Vici wrapping around behind the tower and able to find mind control. So he's been getting the business this match. He yeah. got destroyed last time and I mean, obviously made a big impact on that Dark Seer later. Probably can do the same thing on the Simic Mola this game goes on. Both heroes kind of have the same concept of being able to just retreat and jungle a little bit, right? Enigma, same thing as that Dark Seer. But Vici, they want to punish him the second time as he steps up, gets those Eidolons. Oh. And they will get all of them. Oh my god, the tag team oh. for the kill. Yep, get you. it. Oh, he could have denied that. He tried. Control. I think he tried. Now we're going to bring in GH here, give him a little bit of a better time. And the plus side of this Enigma is that you're still getting denies on range creeps, even when you're not necessarily oh. doing a lot as... Ooh. Oh my god, Ori. Back top lane. Sorry. Ori jaunted to try to dodge Matu's Gale, and he actually jaunted into Ancients and lost oh his entire god. health pool. <laughs> that may have just changed the entire matchup. He has to bring a salve now, probably, on the Courier, and he was clo getting close to bottle. That is... That's huge for Matu, because he was losing in the last hitch kind of significantly. Oh, man. That would have been dead, I think, for the uh, puck yeah. had he got caught by that. Maybe but that's, I mean, that's huge, though. He literally took 400 damage from Ancients. A little bit of a misplay there, and we'll get punished because of it. Yep. Paparazzi, the though, meanwhile? Reset, at least. Yeah. Trying to deal with these Eidolons yet again. As they bring GH up, it looks like Mind Control's going to have a better time because of it. So far, so good. I mean, how much is that a, a detriment as far as, like, the, the whole laning stage goes? It should still be. I mean, for Ori, he's still going to have a good time. It's just that base damage advantage over Venomancer. You're 76 on Puck. You have a better way to force the wave out constantly. I just was like, when I first saw him, John, I thought he actually got the Prowlers, and I thought he was dead. Oh, Because okay, if it was Prowlers, it. he was 100% dead on the Puck there, and yeah. it would have been a kill to Matu. So Yang against Shadow after those first couple of deaths has been able to equalize in this lane since they brought GH to the top side. And the roll in going to hit instead onto DY. Makes this a little bit tough to get the initiation. Yep. Maybe could have kicked Paparazzi under tower if he hit on him. Perhaps, yeah. Kick is a little bit, the distance is a bit small right on the first few levels. Yeah. But maybe. As, yeah, we see mid already still be able to control. That, those last hits, but yeah, the biggest biggest winner, like you were mentioning, because GH had to go top to try to help this dive that's coming out. Oh, nice catch there with the Lucent Beam by Paparazzi. Very nice. And GH's movement top is seeming kind of painful for Liquid here, because now, like you said, Yang bottom has completely kind of caught his own grip of bottom lane. He's almost level five on the Tidehunter now, too, and yeah, GH just dies top, too, so. Bit of wasted movement there coming out from your Spirit. Oh. And this isn't necessarily an easy lane for Shadow either. Um, although Ty did not go for any points into Gush in this lane instead. He just wants to mitigate whatever damage Shadow's doing and make sure he doesn't take any right clicks either from that I mean, TB. This is, this is such a happy Yang, though. He's like, I'm 0 and 1, whatever. 20 last hits on the Tide. Yeah. He's going to have his Soul Ring or his whatever item he decides to go for pretty soon. And he just walks into the into the neutral camp and he's like, okay. Fight me. Yeah. yeah, it's doing nothing. Then <laughs> GH is going to move got, in. They've got meta, though, so this is where they could try. All right, Inkswell on top of Yang. Going to get the stun. Does he get the... Well, Kraken Shell doesn't matter. Yang just going to pop. And Shadow gets the kill. Bit, o bit over aggressive. Got very confident, but yeah, with meta, they have the damage. And top, the return kill. He gets the deny first. 
Yeah, he takes out that range creep. He's like, oh <laughs> if I'm dying, at least I'll deny something. So yeah, three to three, five minutes in. Bounty runes look like they're going to go two apiece for each team. Mm -hmm. We see uh, Shadow with that meta usage. She wants to make the most out of it, goes to the Ancients, starts farming his, and gives Kuroki the lane. So Grimstroke is a five position this game, but they're prioritizing Kuro getting some levels. Yeah, that will definitely be nice. Uh, even though they don't necessarily have the best of combinations. Sure with the Soulbind. Still, the levels on that hero make all the difference in the world as they Mind Control gets the D-Ward. Yeah, they have, I mean, they don't have great ones, but like the, even just like the small little like mini stuns that can come out from like a Malefist can be kind of annoying, but. Oh my god, so much action all over the map here is they're gonna be able to find another kill onto Mind Control as Ori died in the mid lane, Ooh. so not often that you see an Earth Spirit able to gank the puck like that. No, must have used the orb, I guess, aggressively. I wasn't actually looking at mid. Yeah. And Matu is caught up with the double Wraith bands and stuff too. His last hits are looking a lot crisper. Oh. Six minutes in. Every time there's a rotation from one side, the other one makes something happen as well. Yeah. And it looks like Veil is going to be the call for Ori. They with do have a lot of magical yeah. damage. With Like we were saying, with Lich and Eclipse, right? Those yeah. two, if they get caught in the coil, it's going to be an incredible amount of magic. He's making the move now too. Coil thrown oh. right away. Got him. The fear pulls him back in, and, well, didn't stand a chance. That could be something interesting. You break the coil with it. the Sinister yeah. Gaze. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to think of ones that they could use to do it, but, yeah, yeah that one's a little bit. It could happen. Could happen. Yang slowed down again. Matu on top of him, giving him the punches. TP. This guy's just going to TP out of there, though. That's a good play. And in oh, the man. meantime... My control. They got a ward. They see him. Oh, no. He drops down the Midnight Pulse, but will eventually fall. He knows the ward's there. Immediately pings it. But this rotation by Ori, he used the coil, and it, this is all under an Arcane Rune. So he still has very efficient mana, sitting up high, and his coil is going to be back up in eight seconds for another move. I will say, Liquid feel like they've been sacrificing mind control a lot in they this really series so far. They really have. <laughs> I mean, he's just got Soul Ring now. Level four on the Enigma. This. Tide's level six. Dude, they're seven. going back in again. Oh, oh my, my god, my control. My control's like, I got the ward though. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Everything's fine. Quick, eat a tree. Everything will be okay. Oh, that's that's a bit that's costly though. That death that's yeah. a bit too many now on my control. It's five already. Coming off for him. I think he was six oh and six at this point last game, so he's still he's one under. <laughs> he did have a bit more farm though, right? Like he was yeah. he had just ion shells to get him farm. As an enigma, you can't just ion shell. Sure your eye lines could farm and stuff, but it's not the same as this this ion shell that gets you all that. You actually have to be there. Yeah, and might have been feeding away some Eidolons here and there as well. We've been seeing Luna take out a lot of them. It feels yeah. like fifty two last hits, twelve denies on the Luna. Already Mask of the Madness finished up. So it's gonna be that Luna versus the Tower Blade farm. As Paparazzi has been boosted just a little bit more, getting all those kills onto my control. Yeah. It is still Vici that are in the slight lead, though. With yep. Seven kills and feeling quite good about it as they head over here. Kuro, going to try and take a walk away. Yeah, they've got a little bit of a gold advantage, but uh, Liquid has a little bit of an experience advantage because of, you know, the terribly jungling and Kuroki getting a free lane down bottom. Right. So it's a nearly level six on this Grimstroke. And you've seen this a couple of times from teams, sort of hiding out in the trees and trying to gather whatever experience you can when people are pushing that tier one tower, as mm -hmm. it's looking like a smoke up from the Earth Spirit and the Venoman. So they're going to wrap around in the dire jungle and Paparazzi. Get the ward down. They spot him very briefly here, and Matumbo Man with GH could maybe make something happen, but they're going to go into Kuro in the bottom lane as well, as he is going to ink swell and try and get out of there. The shards, it looks like they will be able to find that kill. Meanwhile, in the jungle, trying to take down Paparazzi, they will get that kill as well. Wow, and he seemed to, he pinged them. You saw that too, like after they put the ward down, he pinged in the area, kind of like seemed like, wait, I'm not sure, I don't know, I don't know. But, and then he, gets, he just gets caught by them anyway, because they were smoked, only GH is broke. Big stuff. Yeah, my control gets a lot of space out of that too. He gets uh, two or three or maybe even four waves up top, and now gonna get tower pressure. Suddenly level six. Mm -hmm. He's got Soul Ring, gonna have boots here. And we you can see, look at where he's been, just dying over and over again in that lane. Yeah, I mean, he has no other place to really be in, as an Enigma in this game. He has to just pressure this top tower. So, like you said, the Puck was going for the Veil. We look at the Venomancer, same thing, because you look at his side of the team, they have a Grimstroke, they have an Earth Spirit. Great Veil game for them as well. Very nice, level nine on that Venomancer. 
It's currently sitting at the highest level in the game. And Terrorblade net worth chart. You can also see he's starting to top it with the Luna being up there uh, in spite of that death. Yeah. Hit the 10 minute mark. She got her, the, I guess, the, probably like the, the item that makes you farm faster first. Right? She got the Mask of Madness finished a little bit before the TB has either the Blade of Alacrity or the Yasha. Now Shadow, with the Yasha coming out, he's going to be able to keep that, keep that pace, if not surpass. Because Paparazzi, instead of just straight jungling, he's gone bottom. And you see the build. We saw this done Ooh. by, we saw this done yesterday. The high points in the aura. Roll in, big initiation. They drop down the ulti as well from Matumba Man, but the coil there to try and turn it. Seeing if they can life steal through this to keep that Luna alive, but it's not going to be quite enough. And with that, Liquid find a defining kill as Luna goes down and DY will as well. GPM talent now picked up by Matu as well. Knows the type of game. Sometimes I've seen, I haven't seen people grab this Venno Gale, but in this type of game, it's like a Luna. It's usually when you're playing versus like melee, melee type carries, you can keep just that Gale consistently on them. But GPM is yeah, great. Yeah. But I haven't seen, I have seen more of that Venno Gale. It does feel like Liquid strategy in this game is just sort of send Matumbo Man around with this hero and make things happen. They've yeah. killed off the other hard carry twice now. and. As you said, Shadow's just been left to do whatever he wants. Yeah, that's like that's. I think that's why he likes to play these like the Bristle, the Venno. You just you just go, you just go to the enemy team, and you're making space. Yeah, it's always kind of the way Matsu's, almost always the way he's played for this team, except when he was playing like the Lycan and the Lone Druids and stuff in the past. Right. But since then, he's yeah, he's taken the role of space maker. Ori, long duration silence there. Let's throw out that magnetize, and it looks like this puck is likely to die. Yeah. Kuro, initiated on in the mid lane, but Earth Spirit's gonna make that rotation. Can they get anything? They don't have Magnetize here, otherwise I think they fight that with TB nearby, but they call it off and Grimstroke just gonna give up his life. Yeah. And immediately you see Matu, ports to the tier two. He's just gonna park those Venom Wards, try to stall them so that they can keep getting this farm on the Terra Blade and this farm on the Enigma. You see, right, Mind Control, zero and five from earlier, but all the way up to 46 last hits, and he has a full Midas now on the yeah. Enigma. I mean, he's still going to be behind for a while here, but it's for at sure. least the beginnings of a comeback, it feels like. Yeah, and for himself. It's going to take a while for that Tier 1 tower to drop, it looks like. At least they're going to send in some illusions, look for a deny, deny. No, not going to happen. Oh, oh he, he did, got he, got he got it. it. He got it. Oh, Shadow, what a that player. Was that was absolutely beautiful. Did they both hit it with the Venom Wards and the, uh, and I the thing? So. I think so. I think so, right? Yeah. yeah. I thought the Venom Wards got it initially. Oh, Midas for the Enigma. Yep, Midas Enigma. They've got GPM talent on Venno as well. They're going to have probably the GPM talent on the Grimstroke pretty soon because Kuroki's been getting a lot of levels this game. The CDR for the Enigma, which is basically a GPM talent, although that comes at 15. Yep. But nonetheless, Paparazzi here going to try and keep up his farm. I mean, we have seen Lunas occasionally take over the game when they're ahead, but it's feeling like Luna's not enough ahead in this game. No, and she's, like we were mentioning, it is a four protect one. So it is a lot on that Luna to be able to actually just straight up carry. So where do we go from here? Looks like Earth Spirit again trying to get set up and Vici I don't think at this point. Vici, I think, like, they, they want to be able to put some pressure on. Yeah. Like we said, like, be running around with at least four heroes while Paparazzi tries to farm, because Liquid, it's it's the same thing that they did kind of last game. This one, it's not like they need a BKB or anything for their timing, but they know now they've got a Midas Enigma, and they've got their Terra Blade who's been free farming. Venomance are also having a good time. Like, oh. They're probably feeling pretty good about just farming. Well, and that's why you see Vici go in there, get yep. the kill on the Earth Spirit at least. Not probably the hero that they would have loved to get, but they take it. Uh, we did also see that the Tide Hunter ended up getting the Bassy, but it was the Tusk that picked up the full Vlads. Yeah, I did see that. Dyer's top hmm. tower is under attack. I mean, Bassy is still pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Bassy and Vlads do stack. Right. But, interesting. It's just so useful to have the Vlads on the Tide, though, because it, it benefits your anchor so much, but maybe they're thinking that they're not going to be always, like, the Tusk is always going to be the the Luna. I'm not too sure. Yeah. Interesting. Nonetheless, as we hit this 15 minute mark, I'm gonna set up for bounty runes again. Yang has been able to farm somewhat aggressively here on this side of the map. Has the uh, full hood completed. Might be going towards the pipe soon. Yeah, good pipe game. Good pipe game on both sides. I'm just yeah, trying definitely. to, I don't know if they're gonna build one on the side of uh, Liquid. I think it's maybe GH. GH might be the one to do it. Yeah, he's got two bracers and a hood queued up at least. Yeah. The Venna looks like he has his queued okay, as well, so they too. might go for it. Okay. 
That's fair. Yeah, I actually did see him pick up the hood earlier. Phantom's Embrace. Fade trying to run with the Snowball. Onto the creep, seeing if he can walk away afterwards. Shards up Matumbo Man, but then backs away. Nice play there to keep him alive. And oh, Puck going in. Um, Soulbind now onto two. They're thinking about chasing this one down as well. The stone is going to go out as well. Can they do enough, though? The Chain Frost already out. Ravage to try and turn this one. They've caught on to two, and it looks like maybe Vici can take this fight if Matumbaman can get run down, but now Shadow shows up. And with that, Metamorphosis Pop trying to chase forward and see if he can take down Yang. Matumbaman is still living so throughout tanky. all of that. You can't build out that Venomancer that easily, and Puck is going to get punished. Oh, my God. They had to use so much to kill Mata. Look at it, like Lich almost died as well. It was looking like a great fight from Vici because they had this high ground position with everybody there, but this Vano is just so tanky with this hood. 1500 HP plus hood. GH actually had missed the silence too in the uh, in the first roll that he went in for too. Yeah. Definitely was looking a bit scary, but. That is nuts. And then you compare how much damage also the Veno did in that fight. Yeah. 47, almost 5,000 damage. That's what a Venomancer will do. Veno does, yep. Even if he dies, those little wards, and as long as he gets his ulti off, incredibly significant. And yeah, my Control's gotten all the space in the world, just what we were saying. He's <coughs> still not all the way at the top, but look at that recovery. He's yeah. close to the puck at least, and like we were saying, the BKB, that's going to be huge for them. Nobody can really stop him. Once he gets a BKB, there's just free, free control in the fights for my Control. Looks like it's just been about 200 gold for the Luna as far as killing off those Eidolons. It's not the biggest in the world, but, you know, it's been doing a good job of it. Mm -hmm. So 16 minutes, and you said that they felt pretty comfortable, Team Liquid, sort of uh, just farming up and stuff, but it shows there in that mid lane that they're capable of taking a fight if Vici overextend. Yeah, definitely. Especially, it was, was kind of like the way it happened, right? It's like... I think they like were like, oh my god, wait, everybody's here on the side of Vici, but Shadow was pretty close because he's farming in that, you know, farming the ancient areas as this uh, as this terror void. <coughs> so it depends on like the location, but yeah, they're still they're still pretty keen on fighting. Yeah. And GH has switched from the uh, hood. I think he was probably saying like, I want to go pipe, and then Matu's like, wait, I, I already have one, so right. they just yeah, switch it up a little bit. Paparazzi now getting towards that BKB. He really needs it versus Liquid's lineup. I mean, both sides have a lot of magic damage, so eventually the BKBs will be needed, but they want to get their, you know, first little greedy, greedy farming items before they have to go for that BKB. Yeah. So, yeah, 1k net worth lead right now for Team Liquid. It does feel like that could become more and more pronounced. It's the TPs are going to go towards the top lane. That's the Tide Hunter moving in there. The rest of Vici are on the other side of the map. And we'll see if... I mean, it doesn't feel like you want to try and pressure a tide here under the tower. No, not when he's got the full no. finished pipe just now. 1800 HP pipe like Ooh. on a tower can be pretty scary. Earth Spirit on the high ground there. GH, is the smoke going to break? It looks like instead they're going to find it was just a TB illusion. Smoke popped on him as the TB was the real one in the Ancients. And now Earth Spirit wrapping around from the other side. Michi, they have eyes on him. They're going to snowball up here onto the Earth Spirit, try and take him down at the start of the fight, see if they can burst him in time, and they will be able to. And now Shadow, maybe a bit far forward, but Vici not comfortable going uh -oh. for the full initiation. He got Gale. hit by that Gale. He doesn't have his BKB. Oh, he does have it there. Ooh. Now pops it. Would have been very deadly otherwise. Chase forward for more. They already dropped down the Midnight Pulse. Shadow trying to walk away, but he's in the coil. Or he gets the silence there as well. Ravage to follow it. Can they burst him in time? The snowball comes through, and they do manage to take down that Terror Blade. Now Matumbo Man, as Yang walks forward towards him, it's getting a little bit too dicey for Vici. With no BKB on Paparazzi, they might decide to back out. Although, Ori might just be a bad man. And the Phantom's Embrace able to walk away and hit onto a creep, it looks like. Gale clips him. In some trouble, TPing out of there. Malefice onto Yang. No way to TP, break the TP for Ori. Snowball forward, Mind Control still has that black hole if he wants to use it. And thinking about dropping it here, he does connect onto two. And Nemo on the other side, they end up breaking it. So this fight is looking pretty good for Vici, but they end up losing the Luna in the end. And that might be about all that she wrote as Liquid is going to start to lay into this Tide Hunter. He wants to take that embrace off of him, but it's not happening as they eventually kill off Yang, possibly. Yeah, it's happening. Man, Matu is just, they're so scared of him. You saw him running in, they're trying to kind of like hit him and he's just too tanky with this pipe because their physical damage is a bit limited. They'd already expended everything, absolutely everything to kill Shadow and he's alive again now. And Matu gets a, I think it was a four man poison over with the Enigma hole on the side there. Oh man. 
Big they stuff. To, yeah, they, they blew up. They lose everything, right? It was Coil, Chain Frost, and Ravage all to kill Shadow. And normally you think like, all right, this this black hole, it's it's you know hitting onto two, and that should end up you know working pretty well. But then they end up breaking it, and I mean, it doesn't matter that they break it. They kept them away long enough. As it does look like Earth Spirit is going to get ran down here by Vici. But Please in the meantime, kill. it's Roche. Yeah. And now that's going to give Shadow. I thought he might, might maybe, after getting burst down by so much magic damage there, might switch to a BKB. But now he's got an Aegis, so he's like, okay, I can be more greedy. <laughs> I can go for my Scotty, finish that up, and then maybe go for that BKB if I feel the need to. How many times have we just seen the, the Gale just barely clip onto those heroes yeah. and then be put in a rough situation, having to pop that BKB early for the Luna? Exactly. Now and having the Gale summons two wards. Exactly. I was literally about to say that makes the <laughs> that makes the team fights really devastating. If he ever lands like a two man Gale, the fight's just like, oh god. And it's gonna be a blink dagger for the Venomancer. Get in the midst. I think he's realizing if he just gets right in there, gets the poison over, gets the veil. He will be that distraction for his TB. I do you like that spell amplification for the puck? Yeah, it, they, they both got super buffed. Both of the level 15 talents. That's nice. Yeah. Because what, it was 50 damage and 10% spell amp, I think, before? Right. Pretty sure that was, yeah. Needed a buff. Definitely needed a buff. I really like, yeah, the spell amp plus veil, since they are, uh, what, it's, the way it works is additive. Okay. It's quite strong on the puck. So 4,000 net worth lead here for Ooh. Team Liquid. Ooh, not too. Look at that, though. He starts porting in, and look, the Tidehunter oh. and the Puck, as well as when they have a Lich down below, they just start running from Matu. <laughs> that says a lot. Yeah, I mean, they like, don't I have. Don't be here. They don't have their big damage, though. Like you said, like static damage between the Puck and that. They don't have the Luna there, so. And that makes it so predictable where it is that Vici are going to take their fights. Like, Veno doesn't need to know anything else about the game except that Luna is not there, and then he can TP in. Yep. Makes it so much easier for them to play. And it's the BKB for mind control. Yeah, and now the I mean, now team fight seems so hard. Oh, DY. That does not stand a chance. As eventually just gonna get beaten down. Got the whole wave. Awards. Well, all about the range creep at least, right? Something the like Tumble that. Man denied it. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> In the meantime, Paparazzi just gonna keep on trying to farm up. This is his only game plan right now. There's not really a great plan B at least. No. Yeah, that's what he has to do. It's a, it's a four, it's a four protect one, as we said. He, this this paparazzi needs to be the most farmed hero in the game for them to have a shot versus Liquid. But yeah. Liquid, they've got yeah, they've got this tower blade who's matching the farm, and like we said, my control caught up. Even though he's died six times, he's got the key items. Has the BKB very close to blink. Team fights are gonna get a lot tougher and a lot more awkward for Vici to take. Oh. Oh, in Yang. the jungle, Yang, a bit too far forward. The shard's gonna block him off, trying to keep him alive, but not gonna happen. He was just getting pretty far forward there. And yeah, now they want to get, Liquid wants to get a little bit more out of this meta usage, go for this tier two. Now there is still the tier one standing in the bottom lane, but comfortable pushing forward towards this tier two. And it looks like it will fall really quickly. Vici can kind of just come in and maybe throw out a shards or something to pull the creeps. I mean, there is still sort of an answer of like a level 25 puck super late down the line, but how often have we really been seeing people even get to level 25? Yeah. It's, it just doesn't happen all that often. And the Terrorblade and the jump forward coming from a Tumba Man, I mean, they force people back. Yep, that was the plan. Get the tier two, yep, threaten, and then you can back up and farm, wait for meta again before you try to take the fight. And yeah, Shadow, since he has had that Aegis like we were mentioning, got the greedy Scotty, knows that he can do that because he can go for the BKB afterwards. Definitely feeling a lot of pressure on Vici. Four-person smoke now. You do sort of get the idea that they know that this is happening yep. as GH calls it out, and immediately Mind Control is going to hide off on the side creep wave, push it out with his Eidolons, not show. Yep, same thing with Shadow. Away. Shadow's just going to send those illusions to push out the top wave too, and it'll start to get a bit obvious, even though yeah, Liquid already knew because they have that you know ward outside the base. And looks like Vici are just not going to be able to do it. And it's just such good, like, recognition, Liquid, of, of where their movement's going to go. It's like 
chess happening in front of us a little bit. <laughs> it's just it, it's the understanding, right? Yeah. They're just like, yeah, we have Aegis. Yeah, we still have like BKB, Blink, Black Hole, but Shadow doesn't have meta. Like, there's no point in us really. What's what would we gain out of getting a fight here? There's no Roche. There's no outer towers that we can like. If we do get a fight without this meta, the, there's just not. There's no. There's no risk in them doing what they just did. Yeah. Just sit back, chill, wait for meta, and then they can look. So 16 to 16, but feeling a lot more in favor of Liquid. Yeah. And, well, still waiting as the Aegis is just now going to expire. Have about three minutes until it's capable of respawning. This is one of the, this is, I mean, not one of the first, but one of the first in a while, I guess I could say that. Uh, look at GH and Kuroki's net worth. They're just hey. neck and neck because Kuroki, he got given a lane. And he's a Grimstroke, so he's got his GPM talent. He's significantly farmed. Look, he's got a Glimmer. He's got an Orchid Cued. Dude, this is the most <laughs> Kuro's been farmed in a while. Look he's got him. an Orchid Cued. <laughs> his Grimstroke, right? Yeah. Make it work. Okay. Vici feel like they need to make something happen, though, again. And it's a five-man smoke. We'll see if they can catch Liquid out this time. They've got the Butterfly finished on Paparazzi, and they've got all their ultis available. So they want to try to get something on this peak timing. I think the Aegis is reclaimed as well. It is. Yep. So... Again, Kuro there trying to break the smoke, but they're heading towards the mid lane where Enigma might show as the courier is going to head over towards the secret shop. They want something bigger than Kuro right now, and well, it looks like they're going to have to settle for that. It might end up being uh, enough to let them push at least a little bit. As Kuro will die. But immediately look at the, the side lanes. Like GH starts forcing bottom. You see Matsu's already heading top. And they yep. don't actually have the wave. The wave ain't there in the mid lane. Oh, Mind Control stuck around a bit too long. They do have Walrus Punch to try and keep him in position. Shadow going to throw out the Reflection. TP away. There's going to be Coil. broken. Mind Control. BKB is not going to be able to do enough as they just chase him down. Well, that is 26 minutes and getting ready to push towards this Tier 2 tower. They have buyback on both of their heroes still. Okay, well that cuts it down quite a bit. Yeah. And now they get to put some aggressive wards down and control a little bit of Liquid's jungle. I mean, it still definitely feels like if you get a full five on five fight, it's not gonna look that good, but Liquid just keep on throwing one or two heroes away at them and jump in Ravage, gonna connect on him a Tumble Man. He's in he the cover the of the off. Glimmer Cape, but it's not gonna be enough. But looks like the chase now comes as Shadow is moving forward from this one. The Magnetize as well as that Poison Nova is starting to really lay into Vici. And Fade is gonna be the other one that pays the price as well as this Tidehunter, but it's not the big core. Luna is still gonna be able to get out of this one, it looks like. I th I, they got three, though. Yeah, that's Matsu true. Matsu got the ulti off. And they can turn that one. And that's going to be the BKB finish for Shadow. And they still have, yeah. I mean, my control's got BKB and Black Hole. And, oh, an Arcane Rune. All right, that's pretty good. <laughs> Arcane Rune plus the CDR level 15 talent. Oh, my God. <laughs> he wants to go Midas something. Give me the Midas. There you go. 50 second cooldown. Very nice. Oh, it's brilliant. All right, Dagon for Puck. They will have Tidehunter back up in 20 seconds. He has buyback as well if they want to be able to defend this. 4,200 to 92%. Mmm. Yummy, yummy. The efficiencies might... I wonder if you could surpass 100% efficiency on that <laughs> if you have, like, Arcane Rune and stuff. No? Oh, no. Okay. All right. Thanks, Pimp. <laughs> why? Why? That, that makes sense, right? You can't go over 100%. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, the cooldown reductions in Arcanes technically would, right? I mean, whatever. JJ's just like, I hate you so much. Right <laughs> <laughs> I can hear, oh, my God. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 29 minutes. All right, the movement in. Vici ready to push again, possibly. I mean, it does feel like they're still needing to keep that pressure on in some way. Maybe they need to wait for Puck to just get super farmed at this point. They don't have Ravage right now. That's the no. one thing. But they know that meta is on cooldown from Liquid. So they've got 50 seconds where they're playing pretty confident. And Shadow just pulling that creep wave past. All right, Roche spawn is DY. DY does scout it immediately. Yeah, but we've, I mean, we've been seeing so much. I feel like in the last in the last year or so, I've seen so much more creep manipulation between like illusions and people cutting it. Not like cutting the next wave, but cutting like the next, the second wave. It's right. It's like they just go for these really deep plays to mess up the creep equilibrium. 
the next level play, you could say. Mm -hmm. This does set up for a double wave moving towards mid. Shadow over by the ancient camp is going to come in and try and pull that creep wave back with his Ooh. illusions. Illusion rune top. This is where Ooh. Liquid definitely wants to try to take something here. This makes the I mean the power of Terra Blade with illusions is <coughs> so much crazier. Yeah, the shard's going to block Shadow in there for the moment. He's not quite at that level 20 talent. It can make a pretty big difference, particularly against Aluna. Yeah. He doesn't have a Vlad's or anything on his team either, so his sustain isn't really the same when he's just tanking a rush. Paparazzi's finished a, a Satanic as well. Okay. Need to be careful about this. This does mean she does not have buyback because of gold. 1,500 away. So it looks like they're going to try and keep Roche under lock. I mean, Paparazzi's really big right now. He is, definitely. Just still, it's always that threat. It's just it's this black hole. Just got to watch your positioning. Smoked up right now. Enigma is smoked. He jumps in. He's got him caught the black hole there immediately. Yank it trying to interrupt this one, but with the BKB, there's no answer. But there's a Satanic immediately turning this back around. Oh and God. GH not catching on to anybody at all. They use that Eclipse as well. Paparazzi still living through it for the moment. But Shadow too big, too bad. And in the middle of all of them, the, the Ravage interrupted after all the BKBs came out. Can they kill off in time though? Luna dies, no buyback. And that might be the thing that turns it. They buy back on the Tusk. They feel like they need to take this fight right now. But everybody from Liquid is so survivable, and now Matumba Man blinks forward, finds DY, the TP away, Malefits interrupts that one, and done. Ori wasn't there for the start of the fight. Ori was pushing out the top lane really quickly. Liquid got, they saw that, and they just immediately go for the jump. Shadow does die before he gets the Sunder off, but he does have buyback, unlike Paparazzi, who spent all of his gold for that Satanic. And Liquid, they probably were keeping tabs of that, too. They probably saw that was a freshly picked up Satanic. And it's one of those things where you feel in a moment like, all right, the Satanic, I'm going to be able to turn this one back around, but lacking that second source of damage. And Yeah, they only have the Luna to really dish out that big damage after the you know, the other spells are all casting. Because like you mentioned, you know, static damage coming up from, from Puck, even though she does have that Dagon to finish off that TB. Once well, the Luna goes down, it's just not enough. It also hurts if you're not there for the fight. That, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, she showed up. Yeah, Puck yeah. showed up at like the end of it. But, right. Yeah, he was pushing top. Luna's back up in 15 seconds, but this is going to be a hell of a fight that they have to take with the Aegis there on the TB. I just realized I do that pretty often. I call I call Puck a she, but then I call it a he all the time. But it's an <laughs> it. But I do it all the time. It's a dragon. It's a, it's a, it's a fairy dragon. My girlfriend just loves the hero, so I always just associate it for some reason. Look at it. It's a cute little guy. Yeah. Girl. Dragon. It's an it. It. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. So now, further control gained. CP goes for the stats instead of the reflection cooldown. So okay. I haven't seen that one that often recently. No, it's not, especially now when you're playing versus something like that, like like someone like Luna, who doesn't have anything to actually like really remove besides the BKB. She doesn't have a Manta. Yeah. But just, I guess Shadow is just prioritizing just himself rather than yeah, just prioritizing just stats for himself, trying to survive. I feel like we've seen a couple of games recently. I think about that AM game the other day where Terrorblade, if you just don't get bursted, in time, then you're going to be able to win the fight. And that yeah. is kind of what that stats tells me, I guess. Especially when he's playing versus like all this like spell damage and spell amp, right? The Puck having this Dagon. Can make, it can make sense. Yeah. Just wanting him to be as tanky as possible. And so it looks like that Arcane Rune held for Puck. I mean, is there another timing that they need to look for? It, it feels like you need to almost find the Enigma at the start of the fight or something and burst him. But even then, you got Terrorblade issues. I don't know. It's it's tough. I think they need to have like things that the other playing into Aegis Cheese. I mean, I'm I'm thinking like clicking on Paparazzi. That might be it. Yeah. He's got the rapier queued up, but that can also be that can be scary because they've been clicking on Shadow. They've been seeing Shadow in the fights. They know Shadow does not have a butterfly yet. But you know <laughs> this TB, the next item, it's either. I mean, it's more than likely butterfly because sure he could go MKB to go straight dealing with Paparazzi, but they've shown that they can kill him anyway without it. Yeah. And maybe the. You know, you can avoid some of the attacks, but Rapier could be enough. You get lucky, you just sort of cross your fingers and hope. It's not a great strategy, but... You'll kill everyone else, right? You don't, yeah, just, exactly. don't just hit the TB, you can hit everyone else with that Rapier. And I, mean, I guess the... I mean, Matu also has a Halberd, but... Oh, God. Yeah, it's kind of a bit of evasion. <laughs> and then the Disarm, too, of course. Yeah, Halberd being, like, amazing versus those range duos, of course, those five-second Disarm. Can't be KB it off. No. I mean, if he gets it off and then... 
if Matu gets the Halber off and then Paparazzi BKBs, the fight is going to be so bad for VT. Just yeah. like just disarmed his whole BKB. We do have the refresher that's going to be coming out for Tidehunter eventually. He's got, I think, the gold fort at this point, pretty close to at least. Okay. But obviously wanting to save for buyback as well. He doesn't have mana. He has, no, has to buy mangoes. Yeah, he buys. Yeah, he buys the mango. I was looking. I was like, uh, 325. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Get, with the mango, does he even have enough? I don't know if he does. I don't think so. He, like can't cast anything else. I don't know. It's gonna be. All right. I, I mean, he, he could enough. try and break some TPs here. Ah, uh, no. Can't do it. So paparazzi is going to TP away. That was really oh close goodness. to death. He was just in the tree line there. We Puck. see these GPM and CDRs and Midas's and whatnot kicking in when this game is just like kind of chilling for a bit. Yeah, Liquid is able to get that much more farm. I mean, Puck is going to start to become an issue pretty soon. Uh, level 23 right now and okay. is going to be able to get to that 420 GPM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the Dagon, the Dagon 5 is going to be significant with all that spell amp. Yeah. It's just needing to be such a, a clean fight from Vici. Yeah, it's just, it's still always this, it's this threat, right? It's just this enigma. It's just, you have to be so careful of your positioning and so careful of, like, when you split away from Paparazzi. If you walk away from him for a second, you just kind of get black hold immediately. BKB black hold, and then the majority of your damage is gone. <coughs> Liquid, looking like they want to try and take this opportunity, hitting a strong timing themselves, and start to deal the damage to the tower. Wards yeah. down, Metamorphosis pop, Shadow staying in the back. They still have the Aegis for a little bit too, so they're trying to make the most of it. Yeah, not that long left though. Only nope. 20 seconds actually. They need to be careful that they don't get caught out as the Aegis expires. Dagon 5 is done. Aegis is really close here to coming off. Shadow still feeling comfortable though. Ori in the backside of all of this, making sure he can break some Blink Daggers. Gets four step by his teammate. All right, and they're and just backing out. And that's what we call making the most out of it, right? Last 30 seconds of the Aegis, they just go. They still have vision here. Oh, Ori. Ori's thinking about it. It's, it's so ward, hard, though. But, yeah. Bit scary. It's got to feel frustrating, I'm sure. Who's going to build the Hex on the side of Liquid? I know somebody. Okay, it's going to be Matu. You always want to build items, because sometimes, you know, you're talking about how the Grimstroke, you don't really have those partners sometimes, but... You can itemize for it, because hey. it works on items, too. So you saw bind, you can double hex people and whatnot, too. And Matu pretty much has it done. Double halberd, even. Yeah, double halberd, double double hex, double ethereal blade. I see GH has the ethereal blade pretty much finished up. I mean, those are. I mean, the double hex is the big one, really. Yeah. But. Has Kuro gotten any closer to that orchid yet? He switched. He, switched. Oh, he, switched over he went for the one. yeah the four stuff when he... Yeah. He never He's still rich, fun. <laughs> He's having fun. He's got 2,200 gold in this bank. Dude, he's got 56 last hits. Like, that's so much for Kuro. Happy as a clam. GH is just going to cut some waves up here. They know that Vici's smoked mid now. They just saw the spells casted, the Dagon as well, and the Illusion. Wow, oh, they're TPing back for GH. Want to find him. Oh! Got him. Yules didn't even need to use the coil. And with that, GH going to try and get away. They know roll. he's over here. Another roll. Oh. He's still getting out of there. There's a Lucent Beam, the Dagon, the chase forward. He's got a BKB himself, though. Oh, my God. He's going to make him actually work for it. get out of here. The roll. He keeps rolling. Four seconds. Eat your heart out. Oh, he my God. He silences him. <laughs> He's alive. He's gone. He used all of his stones, but he <laughs> traversed the distance. Oh, run away, GH. He's chasing and the joint. He wants it so oh bad. He got him in the end. He actually didn't get out. Oh, my God. Or he relentlessly chases. All right, this started here, and then it went like that. That was literally a whole <laughs> map chase. And I don't know if they got to see it. I'm, I, someone may have been able to click on the Luna in time, though, but the one auto attack that hit the Earth Spirit chunked him down. So the yeah. Rapier, if they were quick to click on it, has been revealed. And now Shadow walks up, and yeah, now they should know. Yeah. My god. Divine Rapier picked up 39 mm -hmm. minutes into this game. And, you know, has the MKB queued up, but what do you take out afterwards? Like, boots at that point? You still kind of want the range from the Dragon Lance? A lot of I a lot of questions. I might just have to be the Lance. He's he, The Luna's not really that tanky, though, either. It's, it's 2200 and stuff. It's Yeah, it's tough. It's definitely a tough decision. Terrible does have his Butterfly done also, so you do really need it. Yeah. As you mentioned, the Halberd, of course. They've picked up a, quite a few significant items on the side of Liquid here, too. Like we said, the Hex that was coming out on Venos soon, but also an Octarine now in my control, too. So these team fights. 
Ah, it's continuing to get harder and harder for Vici. It does become an interesting question also of, Ooh, okay. oh, the five-man smoke. Five-man smoke, and also there is a energy booster bought on the Tidehunter. So now, okay, now the mana should be there. Got to be so careful here. You lose one fight by Team Liquid, and you don't have buyback, and all of a sudden, you're going to lose your entire base. Right now, they don't have buyback on their Terra Blade, and jump in immediately initiated. They've been able to find that Enigma right at the start, trying to burst it down, and they will be able to find the kill. GH is there as well with the BKB, but it's not nearly enough to mitigate the damage. Does he miss the right click coming through, and the smoke, the walk away, but they're almost able to kill off a Tumble Man. They burst before he can use the cheese as well. Huge plays, Kuro is dead. The three-man buyback immediately, and now Shadow moves in. But again, he doesn't have buyback. He needs to stay alive here so badly, but there's gonna be the black hole. It's caught up with the Glimmer Cape. It's keeping her alive, they can't find it. Bob Ronzi is a dead Bob Ronzi turns it. Can they do this though? He's already found a triple kill. The Yule Scepter lift up. He wants to turn on to Shadow, but there's the Halberd. It's not gonna be able to right click. He's running away. They need to keep Bob Ronzi alive so badly. The chase, the Glimmer again. He's trying to run the Snowball. He needs to shards to save the they turn, they try to fight, they're gonna be able to bring him down again. Paparazzi, so much damage, but it's not enough. Rapier on the deck, the puck jumps in, and not able to quite get it, and now Shadow has the Rapier, and well and truly in trouble, Vici oh gonna get God. ran down their lanes. That was really well executed fights by Vici too, right? Just the way they just insta oh the Dagon, or again now finding Kuro. Dude, he's trying, he is. He is, I mean, <laughs> there's a reason we were saying that Ori's puck is Pretty legendary, and those are some excellent usages by the whole team there, but Shadow relentlessly chasing the Luna, but these Glimmer Capes, right? Even DY, the little things in these games, just like a Glimmer Cape and a Frost Shield almost keep Paparazzi alive, but now a huge swing, as you said, Liquid now having 20,000 net worth lead. God, and it, you think about that, there was no buyback on the TV at the start there. Oh, that would have been huge, but big plays save the day for Liquid, at least for now, I mean, Without that rapier, it feels like it's going to be so much harder. Yeah, I, I, I really want to like see that one again because like the angle approach that Shadow did in that fight for me was so awesome. Like his whole team, everyone else on the side of Liquid was kind of like on the left side, getting caught by the coil, ca caught by the ravage. Shadow goes to the shrine and wraps around behind them, and that's why he's able to get that big positioning advantage for them. That's a Ti winner right there. It absolutely is. And he's twelve, two, and five in this game. DY now holding the base and Liquid feeling a little bit sheepish after that last one, needing to go back, secure themselves a Roche. This is Aegis, Aegis Cheese Refresher, and they've already, I mean, now it's going to be Refresher 2 on this Enigma? Uh-oh. They will have, uh, they're not quite going to have Ravage, it looks like, when he responds, still yeah. 25 seconds away. And it looks like this is just going to be a Roche given over to Liquid. Drops the MKB. He's got Rapier. He's okay. He's <laughs> slotted. <laughs> Shadow has even grabbed the Refresher Shard too, but let's see if they're going to pass it. I think they would pass it to my control. Yeah, they do. Luna has another Rapier queued up, but still around 3,500 gold away from finishing it. Oh, boy. It's tough. Yeah. I mean, one thing to keep in mind here is that Terrorblade has the Rapier in his hand instead of the MKB, and Luna still does have a Butterfly. This is true. It's a lot weaker though, though. Now her damage yes. is quite puny in comparison to what it was before. Like the satanic, the satanic hits before allowed her to live because of how much damage she was life stealing off because of how much damage she was doing. Now she's doing way less. Yeah. All of Ichi kind of trapped in their base besides Ori. Puck does still have that Dagon 5, has the sheep stick done and is starting to build up that net worth even further. Yeah that 420 GPM talent. But he's getting full. He's got the choices, of course, to go for like refreshers and ethereal blades and whatnot to replace his other items, but. Smoke up with four. TB gonna walk forward first. And the question is, do you just walk up a hill and force them to battle you? They do still have that Aegis. BKB down to eight seconds. I think you just force the battle. You've got, I mean, you've got Rapier, you've got Metamorphosis. Why not? It doesn't need the MKB to hit buildings. Like, it's not like it matters. It's just going to be able to beat it down with the Rapier. Move in now. Metamorphosis there. How do you deal with this Vici? They have the Frost Shield oh, on frost one. Oh, Frost Shield's so good. Still have to be so careful about that black hole as well. Each of these fights becomes so difficult for Vici. And on the meantime, Liquid, feeling like they are in a good position. They jump forward. They sheep the TB. 
Just doing the poke, you know, a poke every single time the cooldowns have used Ag and every single time it's up on him. Oh my god. Keep him a little bit low. Yeah, they gotta actually be careful. That's a lot of damage coming from that Dagon. With yep. a Lucent Beam combo, Shadow, it's not free here. They might sunder one of his teammates or just back out. Looks like he's going for that Satanic next. Yeah. does feel like that item has gotten so much better recently. I know that Black was talking about it a lot. He was loving it. Yeah, I mean, oh. status, it's, oh it's status resist, right? It's just really nice. <coughs> it changes a lot of things because it, it changes things that people, a lot of Dota players have just like have ingrained in their head, right? Like how long d disables last, but status resist just messes, messes things up for you. I mean, the other thing that TB needs to be a little bit careful about, he granted, he does have 50 armor, but uh, <laughs> Tidehunter does have the 250 damage talent now at 25. Yeah. Oh, actually, okay, he actually did go for it. Rather than, CD, rather than CDR in this game. Because we saw, like, the game where Ghost's playing, and he has, like, Glide's death, so it makes a lot of sense, but... Hmm. Like, the CDR works on your items, too, right? So it's, yeah. like, works really well for refreshers, so it's a bit surprised to see him actually take the 250 this time around. So if this game drags out a little bit longer and Paparazzi is able to farm that second rapier, I mean, does it start to become more tenable them taking fights against v uh, Liquid? Uh, it's, it's just this enigma, right? It's you, what can you do versus yeah. like the black hole? It, it it feels like maybe like maybe because Ori's playing really well with the puck and everything, but you're you're four protect one versus a TB who's so farmed and the Venomancer Enigma are still doing a lot in the fights. Right. Still so much chaos coming out from the side of Liquid. Vici needs like the perfect kind of, they need the perfect kind of things coming out, right? They need everything to hit perfectly like they did in that base, the fight right outside the base and hope that Liquid doesn't have like the buybacks, but Liquid's getting a lot of farm. And we were talking about the Hex on the Venomancer, GH also just pumped a full Hex out too. So they have so much, they have just so much at their arsenal now on the side of Liquid. Yeah. The Vici, yeah, definitely have big problems. I mean, Paparazzi sneaking himself to get that rapier. We'll pick it up here, so. Uh, okay. <laughs> Buys it right before he finishes the TP. I see, making sure they didn't end up yeah. getting jumped on there. Such a smart little play there. Yeah, oh. just the little things. Yeah. Right? Just being a little careful. It is a sheep done for the Earth Spirit. Yeah, it's so. It's just, with like the soul binds now, they have so many ways now that it actually yeah. you know, coordinates with it. And, and then again, this movement towards this bottom lane. Shadow's going to pop the Metamorphosis and takes down that Tier 3 tower very rapidly with the Rapier in hand. And with that meta range, he doesn't put himself so much at risk. Uh, not opting Careful. for the Sunder. Not him for the Sunder cooldown. Look, he just hit it from the low ground. And it's the same thing, right? Last 30 seconds of their Aegis, they force the movement onto that high ground to take the racks. So rather than like backing up or anything, no. They're making the most of it. Now they've got a little bit more pressure coming in bottom and a 28,000 gold lead experience mm. finally going their way as well. Experience lead. And yeah, when you're passing the 40 minute mark, it becomes you know more and more important about controlling the map because you get these double runes that come out and that means more double damages for your carry. Of and course. Terrorblade with the double damage is sitting at plus 731 damage right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he walked away from us. Somebody. Oh. It was. It was. That there much. is the Hex, and that is looking like it is going to be a dead old Ori. Does still have buyback since he's got a billion and a half gold. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's so scary, though, the, the control that can come out from a Earth Spirit, because you, yeah. you can rolling boulder stun, Hex, and then rolling boulder again right afterwards. You can get more than enough for someone else to come in and go for Ori. Going for Lincolns immediately after all that on the puck. Seems like a pretty good choice. Yeah. Aeon Disc is going to be there for the Tide Hunter as well, as it looks like, again, liquid smoke up in the river. They're going to wrap around towards the mid lane, it looks like. I mean, their lanes, the their lanes are all pushing, so they're like, okay, we can we can make these <coughs> aggressive moves when everything is just being forced into the side of each. I'll roll up there, check to see if there are any wards. Don't see any. 45 seconds for meta. Beachy's still kind of trapped in their base. They don't have Tidehunter right now. He's going to have to TP back, and also the Puck is going to buy back for this one, as it looks like the Tier 3 tower is going to fall. And with that, Liquid backing away, although Tidehunter's outside of the base, and Shadow is there. They see him. This is Shadowbladed Tidehunter. Ah, this is, it's so hard to make that jump, though, when you know Liquid's right behind him. Way too scary. I mean, Liquid feeling probably pretty damn good. 
Yeah. 34k gold lead. Everyone's farming. Everyone's got GPM talents. Full control on the map. We get towards that 50 minute mark. Is anybody else still close to the next levels? I guess you've got the I Frost Shield duration for the Lich. Yeah. I think Matu is very close to 25 too for the 3x Plague Ward HP. So if he hits one or two heroes with a gale, then there are 3x Plague Wards. Oh, God. <laughs> summoned, yeah. The giant Plague Wards. Yeah. Uh, Enigma also has the Refresher Shard and the Refresher Orb with the Octarine Core. Yep. They are so farmed. Yeah, so farmed, and I mean, they've got a, they got a, pretty much a, not a free rape you're giving them, but they got a rape you're giving to Shadow, and now he's got Moon Shard too. He is critical mass. Oh, movement in. He's not Fiji. with his team though. Fiji. Need to be careful. Jump in immediately. Initiation. There's the hex to follow it up. Can they bring him down in time? Ravage gonna connect onto absolutely everybody, and Enigma again in trouble. They find that kill as well. Shadow's walking in through the river. The buyback comes. They're gonna try and TP into the shrine and see if they can turn this back around. There's no more ravages available for them. Paparazzi. As GH jumps in, and there's gonna be the magnetize onto a hell of a lot of them. The paparazzi turnaround there is though coming out, and oh. the black hole TP away. They just the second one. The black hole from my control. Oh my god. The refresher interrupts. Didn't stand a chance, and another rapier on the deck. <laughs> that, was, that was a little awkward. My control was like, whoops. <laughs> no one saw it. I got another one. But that's, yeah, that's the second rapier in the deck, and that might just be enough for Liquid to actually close this one out. They, Even though they were separated, and it, they got my control again with the double ravage. Yeah. Shadow just comes in from the back then, and he's like, okay, you guys have nothing. And yeah, they were able to control Paparazzi down for the most of it. And the buyback from the Luna. This could be the final stand here. The Hex comes out immediately and able to interrupt Ori in some trouble. Going to have to go for the jaunt away. Can he get out of there in time? Another black hole comes out. Again. He had the refresher shard. They're able to find him. The courier's even dying. Everybody's going down from Vici GG. as Luna is dead. GG called and Liquid 2-0. Uh, this is, I mean, they got a lot of the kills on my control, but it was just... They had no way to stop this BKB black hole, so my control, sure, he got caught a bunch of times, which was an excellent move by Vici, but his job in the fights was literally just BKB jump on top of Paparazzi and get the black holes. Paparazzi even lived I know. almost <laughs> every time crazy. through the black holes and got the satanic off, but yeah, Liquid just having a good grasp of this game still. Buybacks, right? Like, he, buybacks. they get them, they buy back. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, so 2 0 for Liquid, impressive showing. Um, I, I would say that Vici still looked pretty good, though. Yeah. Did you say so? I'm just, I think this is the, I think third game or so, I've saw, I've seen a lot of these four protect ones and they are facing versus like two carries or something. Right. And it, it seems a bit, it seems like it's struggling a little bit, so. All right, well, let's head back to the panel, see what they thought about that one. Liquid 2-0 over Vici.